so you, you. I thought, oh, I, I can't get it. You know, it won't happen to me. I'm, I'm a nice person. I don't go out with all these different guys and stuff like that. It couldn't happen to me. And I really didn't care to even worry about it because I figured, you know, it never could happen to me. See, a lot of women think this can't happen to them, and I always thought that. I'm too high and mighty to get this, you know? I was feeling like I didn't have to worry about worrying about AIDS because I wasn't at risk. I, I thought, but then it didn't happen that way. It can happen to you, you. There's a way of death that's going around the world. It doesn't matter if you're boys or girls. It doesn't matter if you're black or white. AIDS is killing people left and right. So you better be careful in what you do. Because if you go, AIDS will kill you. It can happen to you. She came out and um, she says to me, um, we found in both cases that you're HIV positive. So I said, well, what does that mean? So she said, that means that you have AIDS. And I was like, are you serious? And um, I just said, I just want to be alone for a while. I had like three doctors walk in, like with death right behind them, real serious faces, you know. Um, it was sweetheart stay. Yeah, <laughs> it was sweetheart stay. Um, my husband had just brought me a rose, and my son was playing with us and all that. They walked in, they said, there's no other way to say this, but you have AIDS. Um, I took it pretty good for like 20 minutes, you know, and then tears started coming down. And after he said, you're HIV, do you know what HIV is? I said, no. He's like, uh, well, I'm sorry to say it's got something to do with AIDS. And when he said that, everything else really didn't matter. I mean, everything else, I just clicked out. And it, it was very brief, you know, because they talked and I got me on the bus and sent me home. I guess it was a year ago, last year, like in 1989, I went over there at the health department and I got my results and it, it was a shock to understand that the lady, I forgot her name, but she just sat down and said, you're HIV positive and I just felt a fear go through me and that's when I found out. It's been hard for me to understand why my it just had to happen to my mom and my dad and my baby sister. It can happen to you. Who? You. It can happen to you. You. It doesn't matter if you're boys or girls. It doesn't matter if you're black or white. AIDS is killing people left and right. So you better be careful in what you do. Because if you go, AIDS will kill you. It can happen to you. You don't know who it can hit. It can hit you or your friend, your mother, your sister, brother. I've had people make comments that I don't look like I have AIDS and Mommy. it's dumb because what does AIDS look like? You know, it looks like every person. I do what everybody does. I go to sleep, get up in the morning, <laughs> go to school, eat. Poverty. Um, not having good education and all that, people try to say that that has a lot to do with AIDS, and that's a bunch of crap, you know. Um, a lot of the stars had some of the best education in life, and they still got it, so don't come saying it's minorities and poverty people, um, who limbs and all that, no, you know. Yeah, they probably got the biggest chance, but it's not narrowed down just to them. Everybody is at risk, and um, what scares me is, in, is like it seems to be in everybody's backyard, and they don't realize it, and it's not even with the, um, the gay community, it's with everybody, and even in the white community, too. Um, it's just spreading so rapidly, and it scares me. 
how fast it's spreading. Because I know what I'm going through as a, a person with AIDS and for somebody to have to be diagnosed is, is a real mind blower. It can happen to you. Who? You. It can happen to you. You. I can tell you firsthand that after I found out that I had it, my life hadn't been the same since. I lost um, a lot of good family members. They lost a lot of respect for me, assuming that I had to be this, that, or the other. And um, it was just a thing of people look at you like you're not a human being anymore. They look at you as if you're an alien in a lot of cases after they find out. It's not fun at all, you know. I spend so much time in the hospital. I blow up at the doctors. I'll curse at anybody and everybody that gets in my way when I'm very angry. They do understand, though. They've been very nice. They've been very understanding with me, because that's how I get it off my chest. Well, when I first found out, I, I was very depressed. And that was all I thought about. But now, you know, you kind of overcome that. And you just live a normal life. That's what I'm doing. Sometimes I think about, you know, of course, it's, it's there. But um, I try to look beyond that. I think about it every day. Not as a bad way, but I think, I think, you know, what sometimes I get really frustrated. I'll just look at something and if it's not something valuable of mine, I'll just throw it. Something, you know, just to get the anger out because I'm, I always feel I'm waking up, I'm healthy, and I mean, damn, if, if it's AIDS so called, then I just, why don't it just take effect and just get it all over with instead of this dormant stage of being positive and being so-called healthy as I've been. It reminds me a lot that I HIV by me taking the AZT and the rubbers and people are reminding or seeing commercials on TV. So um, you being reminded every day actually, you know. Every time I lay down I'm reminded that I'm HIV. And uh, something I'm learning to cope with and accept. Of course, I've accepted a great deal of it already. It's just the uh, parts of it I still haven't really understood. And I suppose I will one day if I make it. <laughs> it can happen to you. Who? You. It can happen to you. You. We didn't pay attention a lot because we didn't know that my mom had AIDS. I feel sad that um, and every morning and when I dream it on the night, I ask myself what do, um, does happen to them. I keep asking myself. And, and I know it's very sad, so I keep asking myself. We thought she was going to die fast. We thought she, was, she wasn't going to go to the hospital because she was scared to. We thought we were going to lose the best thing we had in our lives. I thought she was going to die the same day that she told us, but I was saying in my mind, I'm the one that's going to die because it really hit me and it hurt it a lot that my mom had AIDS. Well, we tried to help I'm, my mom when she's sick with my little sister. I watch her. Um, I take her a bath, and I do, sometimes I help her do food for the whole family. She teach me a lot. When she's not there, I could do what she teach me. I haven't told none of my friends, because I don't trust them either. And maybe they'll keep telling everybody else in school, and maybe the whole world will know. Just because I have a family with AIDS, that doesn't mean they're going to get it. Listen close. Listen, please. If you do these things, you can't get the disease. High risk behavior, such as unsafe sex, using drugs, you could be next. It can happen to you. Who? You. It can happen to you. You. 
be careful. I know you prob they all they probably hear that all the time, but this is no joke. It's out there and just be careful. Somebody gave me this virus and didn't tell me that I was always blaming other people than myself. Because it, you know, it takes two to kind of, you know, make things happen. I could put the blame on myself, you know, because I was the one that gave it to her. And I did not go out there and say, actually, you know, give me AIDS, um, through IV, sexual intercourse, or however it happened. Um, but I didn't use my head good enough. My judgments were very poor. And she's paying for my bad judgment. If you want to become a mother in the future, think about it now. If you have I never thought, you know, through the years, uh, sex would be one of the danger zones. A lot of women see a cute guy and whatsoever and want to go to bed with them, and that could hurt them very bad. Because then, if they get infected, and like we were saying, they want to have a baby afterwards, there's no chance. You know, unless you want to bring a baby into this world to suffer with AIDS, because that's all you're going to do. If they decide to have sex without protection, they're really risking their lives. It's like playing Russian roulette. It's got to be rubbers or no sex at all. If you have sex, practice safe sex. Use a condom. Think about yourself first and your safety. And, you know, and use, use protection. You have to be safe regardless of your status. That's, there's no question about that. We want to see you live. We want to see you grow. We want to see you give others what you know. We want to see you happy and live a full life. So take your time and do things right. It can happen to you. Who? You. It can happen to you. You. Because you don't have to be like me, wondering what day that would be my day. My last day. Mommy. You do not want to go through what mm. me, my daughter, or millions of people are going through out there. So remember this, and whatever you do, you have a choice, and it's all on you. It can happen to you. Who? You. It can happen to you. 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 The only part I probably am scared about is pain, and. <laughs> uh, I don't know how worse it can get. Makes me think, will I be here 15 years from now to see my son graduate? Keep trying to do the right thing, and if I don't make it, when you come to the funeral, will you just tell everybody that I tried really hard? 